Hare Krishna. Here we are in Istanbul, Turkey. We have come here to introduce the science of Krishna consciousness here in the Muslim world. One may ask, why Krishna consciousness in the Muslim world? Why not the Hindu world? Actually, Krishna consciousness is not Muslim, it's not Hindu, it's not Jewish, it's not Christian. Krishna consciousness is the universal science of the soul. The soul is called Atma in Sanskrit language. The soul is a spiritual particle, one ten thousandth, the tip of the hair, in quality one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Lord is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss, and the soul also is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. The soul never dies, just as the Supreme Personality of Godhead never dies. So we've come here to introduce the Muslim people to this universal science of the soul because it is actually equally applicable to everyone, no matter what country you may come from, no matter what race you may belong to, no matter what your religion is, your sex, it doesn't matter. Krishna consciousness is completely a universal science because wherever we go in the world, we see that people want to be happy. Everyone wants to be happy, that's a fact. No one likes to be miserable. Everyone likes to be happy. So this Krishna consciousness process is equally applicable to everyone. Just like a match has fire within it. And simply by striking that match, the fire comes out. Similarly, if the living being can come in contact with a person who has realized Krishna, then by contact with that person, if the hearer is receptive, then that dormant Krishna consciousness, that latent, enlightened consciousness within the heart becomes reawakened. And one actually tastes transcendental bliss. And that if one takes up a regulated process known as devotional service or bhakti yoga, then one can fully awaken that dormant, enlightened consciousness and truly experience what is known in Sanskrit language as Brahma Saukyam Tvanantam. That happiness which goes on increasing unlimitedly forever. So actually this knowledge is necessary in every part of the world. Because everywhere people are unhappy, they're miserable, they're suffering. Even people we have money, we see actually their money has bought them nothing but anxiety. Everywhere we see people are unhappy and miserable. So we want to awaken this Dharma and Krishna consciousness in the hearts of everyone. It's very simple. If you would like to awaken the Dharma and Krishna consciousness within your heart, simply chant these names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In that dormant Krishna consciousness, will awaken gradually, gradually, gradually. It's not like a zap of, of uh, lightning out of the sky. It's a gradual awakening, just like on a beautiful spring morning, that sun comes up gradually, gradually, subtly, subtly, slowly, slowly, slowly increasing. So if you will regularly chant this Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If you regularly chant this on a regular daily basis, it is recommended that you chant one and a half to two hours every day this Hare Krishna mantra in the early morning hours. And we also have what are known as japa beads or prayer beads. You can order these from us and chant on the beads. It's very effective. You chant uh, every day, you chant on your prayer beads, the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this way, by regularly chanting the holy names of God, by whatever you eat, if you will first offer it with love and devotion to the Lord, that will be called sanctified eating, or eating of Krishna prasadam. Since Krishna is a vegetarian, you cannot offer him meat, fish, or eggs. But if you will offer Krishna your fruits, your vegetables, your dairy products and your grains before eating them, then that food will be transformed from matter into spirit. And by that act of eating, you will become spiritually enlightened also. 
So if you will eat only food which has been offered, vegetarian food that is, which has been offered to Krishna with love and devotion, and if you regularly chant the names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, we can assure you that you will awaken the dormant Krishna consciousness within your heart. And we have many volumes of books also where you can study this philosophy in great detail. Especially the most important of all the books, it is called Bhagavad Gita. Here in Turkey, we are explaining to people what is this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, and they are purchasing this book. In fact, it has been conveniently translated, I mean to say, into the Turkish language so that they can take advantage of these teachings in their own language and understand what is the sublime philosophy of Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated, Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, Pavitra Midam Uttamam, Prapyakshavagamam Dharmyam, Shushukam Kartamabhyam. This knowledge is the king of education. It's the most secret of all secrets. It's the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and it's joyfully performed. So this Krishna consciousness process will indeed awaken that state of unlimited joyfulness. You will directly be able to perceive your very spiritual nature by direct perception. It will not be some theoretical idea that I am a spiritual being you'll be able to directly perceive and experience your eternal, blissful, all-knowledgeable spiritual nature. So all of these things will come to you. You will become the happiest, most successful person you could ever imagine yourself to be, even in your most outrageous imagination. You could never conceive of the happiness, the joy, the fulfillment that you will experience as you advance yourself along the pathway of Krishna consciousness. So we urge everyone, whether you be a housewife, a student, a political leader, a business magnate, a worker, an artist, a philosopher, a yogi, we encourage everyone, whatever you may be doing, whatever you may be trying to accomplish with your life, please understand that any accomplishments in this material world are limited and temporary because they end at the time of death. But if you can develop your Krishna consciousness, if you can awaken that dormant, enlightened consciousness within your heart, then you will experience a taste, you will experience a reality. You will enter into that dimension which exists eternally beyond time and space. So we're talking something tangible here. This is scientific. You will practically, tangibly, genuinely experience it yourself. And as you advance along this pathway, your life will become so wonderful, every moment will be just delicious. That's the best way to describe it. Every moment of your life will be delicious, ever increasingly delicious. This is called Krishna consciousness. So we hope you'll take this very seriously try to get into this process. We don't charge anything to teach you how to do it. In Austin, we have regular programs. You can contact us. They're held every Sunday starting at 4.30 p.m. You can contact us for the next program where it will be held. Simply call this number, 512-835-2121. That's 512-835-2121. And you can also study this very conveniently from any place in the world through our free e-course on the internet. All you have to do to sign up for the course is go to www.backtohome, that's B-A-C-K-T-O-H-O-M-E dot com. If you go there, you can sign up for our free e-course anywhere in the world. You'll receive these wonderful daily thoughts and wonderful weekly lessons which will guide you and inspire you how to awaken that dormant Krishna consciousness which is there in your heart at this very minute. If I told you you had a, a wealth, a fortune buried in your backyard that was worth $10 trillion, 
Would you like to hear about that? If I told you exactly where it was buried, and I gave you the appropriate shovel by which you could easily dig it up, would you become even more excited? You bet you would. So now I am giving you something which is even more valuable than $10 trillion. And I'm giving you the exact means by which you can retrieve that greatest of all opulence,